Hello everyone and as always thank you for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe to stay across all the new content we've got for you. So today I'm showing you how I've connected up our inverter in our caravan so that all the caravan power points can be powered from the inverter without having to interfere with any of the caravan wiring. So first up you can see we've got our inverter sitting back here. This is the uh, GNDL, it's a 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. We've got a review um, listed that, about that separately. So this has got two outputs, two PowerPoint outputs. You can't quite see this. One of them, this bottom one here, just loops around and it goes to that PowerPoint there, just to allow us to be able to plug something in directly to the inverter. But the second one, this cable here, what we've got going there is that runs down behind the battery box, along the floor, and it goes through this grommet that I've just popped in the floor there. So I, this is a genuine grommet I got from Jayco, designed for this sort of thing. And so the cable goes through there and it goes on the outside. Let's now go and take a look and see where that comes out. Right, so if we take a look outside the van, just underneath here is where all of the um, wiring and hoses and everything go. And you see what I've got under here is this little assembly. So here's the end of the cable. Um, I drilled a hole through that to put this grommet in. So the grommet's sitting nicely in there. The cable comes out and I've got it sitting in this uh, weatherproof box I got from Bunnings. So when you open that, it's an IP44 rated box designed for actually extension cords. So put an extension cord in one end or the other end. I've got this end blocked up. When we open it, there's our cable. That means that um, under here, of course, being quite close to the tyre, there's a chance that water could get sprayed up on there. Of course, because we're in front of the tyre here, it's more likely if it's any spray it's going to go sideways and backwards but I don't want to be absolutely sure we didn't get any water in here so I've got it set like that so um, the hole is as close to this cross member as possible so this is also already providing some protection from the water so I don't think we're going to get any water going up there but that's a, a grommet that's got a rubber seal on it anyway and of course in here's the plug so this comes out we simply then just pull that down until the table stops because I've got a um, cable clock tie on the end of that so it doesn't come too far, too far. And with that, we then simply grab that and plug that in there like that. And so what we end up with is exactly the same type of situation you'd normally have. We've got 240 volts AC going to this plug um, without anything else being in the way. So then back in the van, switch on the inverter. And as soon as we do that, we'll hear the beep of the microwave starting up, which is already connected to 240 volt power. There we go. And now the microwave's on. And all of the other 240 volt outlets in the van, they also work as well. Now we've got a um, 150 litre Dometic fridge, absorption fridge, a three-way unit. And if we have a look on the inside on the, on the chart here, the little uh, power placard, it says that for 230 to 240 volts, it's only drawing 0.8 of an amp, or 195 watts. Since this is a 1200 watt inverter, it's quite easy for us to be able to power the fridge off the batteries now if we wanted to. So that's on gas, and that's now running on AC. Probably can't really see that. There we go. Now, not that we'd probably want to, um, because it's not the most efficient way of using the power, but it means that if you need to, you've got that option available. Now there are a couple of really important caveats with this. The reason I've done it this way is so I haven't had to interfere with any of the caravan wiring. I haven't had to pull power points off and do dodgy stuff behind it. I haven't wanted to do any of that. Essentially all we're doing with this is just a glorified way of running extension cord from the output of the inverter to the input of the caravan power, how it's designed to receive the power. Now as I said, a couple of caveats to make sure it works properly. Excuse that motorbike going past. So whenever I'm going to be running off the inverter, I'm going to make sure that these two power cords are not plugged in. Well actually this is the turn off at the power point. This one's for the hot water service um, and this one here is for the battery charger. Now we don't want a situation where power is coming out of the batteries, going through the inverter, out through the 240 volt socket, back into this power point, through the battery charger and back into the battery charger to go around in a loop. I don't actually know what would happen with that um, but I don't want to find out. So um, it just I suspect it's probably okay because the inverter would be sorry, isolated from the um, but from the input to the output, but if nothing else, it's just going to waste power. I've also unplugged the, uh, make sure we've got the, um, the hot water service turned off. 
because if we have a look at the hot water service, this is a suburban unit, pretty standard on caravans. Suburban, what the, the number is SW6DEA. Probably a little bit hard to see, but just down here you'll see 1440 watts, six amps. Now our inverter can only supply 1200 watts. So if we had leave, if we had plugged in, we'd need to, um, we'd be tripping the the, um, the inverter all the time. The other way, of course, would be just to flick off that that switch there. Um, the power switch which um, disconnects the, the uh, 240 volt system um, but I don't want to have to be fiddling around inside here every time where you turn the inverter on and off. I'd have to say that the worst possible scenario if these were turned on by mistake or left on is the inverter would trip, it would go into overload. So you'd start the inverter up and it would quickly um, draw too much power for it and the inverter would switch off to protect itself and that itself would indicate oh there's something wrong we need to make sure that um, we fix up whatever the issue is. But what I'm intending to do is just to leave those plugged in but turned off. Because most of the time when we're traveling, we're not gonna be in a caravan park, so we're not gonna have 240 volt power. So I'll just leave that all disconnected, which means the battery won't charge from 240 volts. The hot water service won't run from 240 volts, but everything else in the caravan, with the exception of the microwave, which we know about, um, everything else in the caravan can run quite happily off the inverter. And then if we do come to a caravan park, we just have to make sure we plug those in if we want to recharge the batteries or run the hot water service from 240 volts. Now when you're finished with the inverter, packing up is a simple process. Firstly, turn off the inverter. Then we unplug the power. And coming back underneath, we then simply feed the cable back up through the grommet. Still there's a little bit of a tail, just enough to rest on that weatherproof seal, slide that up, and that's done. And then we can see inside how much cable we had brought up. So that's the amount of slack on the cable. That's, so we only used about a metre and a half of cable to go from the uh, floor of the van out to the power point. And also I mentioned before there was a, a, um, a cable tie around the cable. I see you can see that there. That's just put there so the cable can't um, the cable can't pull through any further than uh, we want it to, and put any strain on the cable in here. In any case, the cable itself is got a cable clip there um, to make sure that doesn't get pulled through too far. The inverter's got an earth output if you're familiar with it. That's the earth terminal just there, and so I've got a, a, um, an earth wire going up uh, through the floor of that cupboard there, and it's joined on to this earth point right in here which is the earth point attached to the hot water service. So that way um, the whole body of the van and any metal parts are all going to be earthed to the inverter rather than floating. I hope that's been helpful. Um, like, comment and subscribe. Let us know what you think about that and I'll see you next time.